All right, the Lies of P. I have to be honest, it's a bit of a poorly chosen name, but it's a very well made game that turned out to be a lot better than I think anyone would have expected. Especially since it wasn't from software this time who were pulling the strings. However, these Korean developers are anything but a bunch of dummies. In fact, despite the many references to especially Bloodborne and other Souls styles being perhaps a bit too on the nose, but they did include a very unique and interesting approach to the weapon system, allowing you to mix and match various blades and handles. Now in my first playthrough of the game, I mainly used the Tenitra, the Electro Curl Stick, which already has a very efficient handle, but I also got some really effective results by combining the hat with the baton handle. In fact, that handle seems to be quite popular in combination with other heavy blades, allowing for better reach, better fable arts, and simply more damage output. However, that did make me wonder, what about the baton hat? Well, the fable art seems a bit underwhelming, and it might in fact have the shortest range of any weapon in the game. So combining it with other handles can reach from impractical to downright uh, questionable. Yeah. Well, the handle might handle well, but what would it be like to go through the game using the baton in its pure, original and complete form? Would you then end up feeling like a complete dipstick for using it like that, when so many other blades would outperform it with ease? Or might this piece of police equipment turn out to be a pleasing piece of equipment? Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. And speaking of finding things out, since this is only my second proper full-length playthrough, let's do some additional testing. Because especially before the new patch came out, halfway through this particular run, it was already quite challenging to keep your equip load below slightly heavy, let alone all the way in the light equip load range. So let's see what it would be like to keep our weight under 30% throughout the entire run. To see if the additional speed and stamina regen makes a significant enough difference that it would be worth to sacrifice your defenses. And to keep things theme appropriate, let's only use electric buffs, the occasional electric throwable and the electric legion arm. But of course we already have the long arm of the law on our side before that. So, let's get your grinder ready and take out your P organ, because when your as of yet artificial life is at stake, then let us solve the case of whether or not the baton is something that you can bet on. So, we start off on the path of the sweeper, given that the baton skills best with motivity, and obviously we cannot acquire it before raining on the tutorial boss's parade to show him who's the real master of puppets. Granted, it was not that clean of a fight. I mean, how annoying is it when he changes phases right when you can stagger him, but the transition makes him immune to getting staggered. And then I almost missed the second opportunity as well, but uh, it seems that as long as you perfect parry while the white bars around their health bars, it won't go away. But regardless, at least it grants us access to the hotel. As long as we tell a lie. And no matter how tender, how exquisite, the lie will remain a lie. Unfortunately, there's somehow not an applicable costume in this game. Not even a helmet. Despite that they all already exist in the game. So I guess the next best thing is the uniform we get from Gurma, even though it is a sailor style school uniform, it's still the closest we can get to becoming a real boy in blue. But do not let it distract you from our main objective to, uh, oh, a pink post poopa. Okay, so after eventually making the second officer puppet whistle a different tune, we acquire our main weapon of the playthrough. And it will remain in its complete form, of course. Although we can at least add a motivity crank to it for better scaling in the next area. But in order to progress in the first place, we will need to save our daddy's ass from some jack making an ass of himself. 
And you would think that this ass could do jack if he just repeatedly backstab him. But I kind of felt like a jackass trying to make the backstab actually work in this game. Which is one of only very few complaints I have about this game's design. That the hit detection on backstabs really is not functioning the way it should be. But despite half-assing it, this still seems to be the best tactic for dealing with the majority of humanoid mini-bosses. Moreover, if he's going to dress like an ass and I'm holding a stick, then... Uh, yeah, okay, I'm already really pushing my luck when it comes to the monetization here. So, uh, I think it's pretty clear what I'm trying to get at. Just uh, use your imagination. But something you might not have a clear understanding of is the lore behind the scrapped Watchmen, since there's an easy-to-miss side quest associated with him. You even get to learn that his name is Officer Murphy. But given how boldly he lays down the law, he's anything but a chicken Murphy. In fact, the animalistic way he crawls on the side of the building makes him resemble some sort of an abhorrent beast. I like his mustache. Mustache. And on the ground, he fights like a parlian ape with his shockingly long arms of the law. But despite all of that, let us see what happens when I bob this cop on his cap with my good nighty night stick. Well, let's see how this goes. That should have been a strong attack, but hey. Okay. Good start at least. Oh, fuck. Yeah, the don't miss the critical. Ah, fuck. Stupid delay. Oh, it's already changing. Fuck. That's not good. Oh, fuck. No. 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 Shit, I'm dead. I'm pretty sure I'm dead now. Oh, I survived. Surprising. Oh, fuck. Missed times. <laughs> Better. Oh fuck, mistimed. I think I got him. Alright. Okay, other than the short range, the fact that this weapon inflicts blunt damage is at least early game very beneficial. However, that doesn't mean it will remain that way. By the way, although there is no appropriate outfit, there is a theme appropriate whistle in the game. Although despite the obvious Bloodborne inspirations, this whistle does not summon some eldritch monstrosity. It doesn't even summon a horse, which ironically would actually still be kind of theme appropriate. But uh, what is definitely way less appropriate is that we can now play around with our... God damn it. With our P organ. Of course, this isn't the first time I've rigged up a s puppet. <laughs> it looks like an unmanned fire hose. I mean, they could have just called it a mechanical heart or something. That's quite literally what it's supposed to be. But anyway, that of course requires quartz. And the next area contains two additional quartz for us to collect. But before we get to do that, where would an inspector be without a gadget? And the watchman provides us with the electrical arm. However, in order to make this gadget go, you definitely need to upgrade it. Otherwise, you can't even move while using it. 
Not that it matters much because the first upgrade can be acquired from the next mini boss. However, despite how powerful the electric arm can become with the right build, I hardly ever even use it in this playthrough to begin with. But who knows what kind of playthroughs I might end up doing in the future. Heck, this is not even meant as an actual challenge run yet, after all. But back to gathering quartz, one can be obtained behind the trinity door in a safe location, but uh, taking on the last iron giant while he is, uh, well not exactly knee deep in the poison, but the thing is that we're dealing with a mythal like situation where you can first drain the poison to make the fight a lot easier. In fact if you do that, there is very little to this fight, as long as you're aware of the tracking on his feet and the shockwave style hitboxes. On top of that, smacking feet with a baton almost feels uh, nostalgic. And you will respect my authority! Ow! 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 Sweet. Ow! But after turning that mini boss into a puppet without a future, and then after upgrading our P-organ, we encounter a boss with an even uh, hotter P-organ. In fact, you can get some really satisfying results by smashing it right in the Fornasi. But if I don't even remember the moveset of this boss fight in the first place, then I might not even get that chance to begin with. I mean, I did do some early game testing after finishing the game, but this is still merely my second proper playthrough. Does it twice in a row. Yeah, I don't know the movesets yet, uh, <laughs> that well yet, of course. Ah, there's no pillar! Fuck! Oh, I got lucky. <laughs> because if you're not behind the pillar... Oh, fuck! Then you will get hit on by the fire on the ground. Fuck, Alicious! Uh-oh. No! Ooh, I was far enough away. Oh fuck! I'm on the ground, what the hell? Uh oh, I don't even know that attack. Uh oh, I'm out of healing! Oh, we got him! Nice! Ooh, that was pretty close. <laughs> close down near the end, but still, first try. Huh, well that was uh, unexpected. Basically, for the early game areas, it seems to be that blunt damage really shines, which makes a lot of sense that actual blades are not as effective against machines. Unless you're playing near Automata, I suppose. However, now things are about to change, as this game is apparently not merely influenced by Souls likes, but uh, also suddenly gets a real Resident Evil 4 vibe to it. So first the puppet frenzy and now actual parasitic zombies. Wow, this town is really going to the dogs. And speaking of which, I was actually unaware how you can avoid the fight against the Atoned, since I never found the survivor NPC on my first playthrough. To be fair, that doesn't even matter because despite backstabs being so unreliable in this game, it is still highly effective against the Atoned, especially when she does her acid grab. So you might as well fight her rather than the survivor. Although I eventually ended up fighting both because of the additional drip I missed out on. I mean, it kinda works if you ask me. But despite looking the part, I was kinda worried about the Archbishop fight coming up because not only was I not using any fire buffs, but this is also the kind of boss where you would expect blunt damage to cease being as effective as before. Moreover, this was still before the patch came out, meaning that the boss hadn't been nerfed yet. And remember that I'm staying in light equip load, so I could hardly have any defense parts equipped at all. And this boss was my first major obstacle in my first playthrough. However, the main issue there was that I tried to fight the actual bishop himself in the second phase, and that is exactly what you do not want to do, because the Archbishop will turn the camera into your Arch enemy, as that in fact might be the truly omnipotent entity 
of the purest evil that he worships. So at least I had that realization already. But other than that, I was actually at a disadvantage compared to my first run. So, let's pray that I won't fall into decay. Well, that's only the first phase. And the second phase is much worse. Oh fuck, he turned around. Fuck, that's not good. Oh fuck, it's quicker in the second phase. I'm on the ground, fuck. No, don't waste my opportunity. Damn it, I couldn't get the stagger. Oh, actually, uh got the stone. Well, that's something at least. Okay, got healing item back. Fuck, Alicious. No! I mistimed all of it. Oh! Whoa, I got lucky. Yeah, I got him, I think. Wow! I got lucky down near the end if I didn't get the stagger. <laughs> wow! I was not expecting that to be a first try. So, after that surprising first try victory, I decided to go nose around downtown, where I encountered honest, uh, well, Jane, I suppose. And Sir Gideon, well not off near the all-knowing, obviously, but uh, apparently that's his name in the Disney movie. But despite the fact that I kind of assumed that they would be like this game's version of patches, they initially actually help you out and only later on go against you because it's business for them. And you can even bribe your way out of it. However, given that they helped me out, I didn't pay attention to the environment and I missed out on the Crescent Moonstone. Now, I did at least acquire the Clorenty Amulet. Which is definitely one of the more beneficial amulets, because even at light equip load, I would still constantly be low on stamina during the next boss fight. But I could not upgrade my weapon to plus 6, because I couldn't figure out where I missed the one remaining Crescent Moonstone. Which was especially painful because of the little bit of HP that the big bunny bro had left when I died. Well, at least for a gang squad style fight, they did manage to balance this one quite well. It's largely still a one-on-one -on -one encounter, with the big bro sometimes charging in while the siblings await their turn. And they might be annoying, but they hardly inflict any damage, making them more like a bunch of snuggle bunnies rather than a bunch of rabbit rabbits. But uh, to be fair, despite all of that, this fight still kinda sucks in my opinion. Because it's simply not enjoyable, and it just goes on with the speed of an asthmatic tortoise rather than a hasty hare. Well, it's at least definitely better than the second encounter. But both versions of the Gang Squad are the only main boss fights in the game that I don't enjoy. Which is still good in the end, because that means that all the other bosses are enjoyable experiences. But hey, at least for this type of fight, it's tolerable. Moreover, I would say that the next boss fight is one of the best in the game. Although given that it's a two-phase fight against two essentially completely different bosses with unrelated movesets, it's quite understandable that they decided to lower the amount of HP in the first phase. And this is in fact the point in the run where the first patch came out. So let's see how much difference there is compared to the original. And of course let's see how well the baton holds up in this fight. Given that in my blind playthrough 
I used the Tinnitus with its original handle, which was absolutely ideal for this encounter, since this boss is clearly weak to both blunt and electrical damage. So how would this only temporarily electric stick perform by comparison? Well, you notice both the, the nerf as well as uh, that, uh, that weapon art actually did very good damage. Holy crap. I'm doing shit ton of damage against him. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, that was the first phase. I think they nerfed him a little too hard, maybe. <laughs> Jesus. That took me a lot longer in my blind playthrough. <laughs> Just to get uh, past the first phase. And there we have Raiden. Also known as Jack the Puppet Ripper. Jack is back. Oh, fuck. Whoa. Grapalacious. Oh! Shit, I'm fucking up. I'm fucking up. Fuck, no! Ooh. He almost got me. Oh, I knocked him out of his buff. What the hell? What the fuck? I fucking obliterated him. Well, Romeo must die. <laughs> well, that's not what I... <laughs> that was not what I was expecting. The king. Ah. I, gotta think the I have a little speechless. That is not a at all what I expected to happen. To find out. Well, that... that, that, that well, long live the king. <laughs> now, given that I didn't want to repeat the same issue with the missing crescent stone from before, I made sure to collect all the necessary half moon stones. And in fact, there are enough of them if you include the quest line with the wine bottle, which allows you to upgrade to plus eight before taking on the next boss. And that's a good thing because champion Victor gave me some trouble during my first playthrough. Now, I wouldn't call him the bane of my existence, but I would call him bane. Especially because both champion and Victor is a bit double if you ask me and uh, kinda arrogant. But yeah, why be humble if you're evolved into a battle man? But uh, to be honest, apart from his muscle mass, it looks to me, like he got the short end of the stick. Uh, but therefore, the end of my short little stick can teach him some humility, perhaps. Whoa, whoa. He's surprisingly quick for such a... Such a big guy. Oh, fuck, delicious. I should have a Fable Arts uh, Catalyst equipped, but I don't have this. I have them, but I don't have them equipped. Oh fuck, in the second phase that continues. <laughs> fuck, tracking. Oh fuck, delicious! He got me. Oh, 
Nice. Oh fuck, he attacks right before he staggers, which is kind of fucked up. That's something to keep in mind. Oh, uh oh, don't fuck her. I got him. Brave, tarnished. Thy strength befits a crown. How am I uh, first trying all the bo all, the, all these bosses? That's <laughs> not. I assure you, on my first playthrough, this went uh, not very well. <laughs> there we have uh, Lexitivia, or what's uh, what's her name? <laughs> This game's millennia. And here we have this game's menace. The P organ is strong in this one, yes. Huh. I honestly expected this run to put me in more of a sticky situation than I've experienced so far. Because up until this point, I've been hitting it out of the park with this little bat. I mean, at some point you would expect to notice how ineffective the baton head would be compared to other blades even when you're keeping the benefits of the handle. And uh, well, that moment came as soon as the swamp presence emerged from the ground. Although the real issue here wasn't so much the weapon, but the complexity of this boss's moveset that I obviously hadn't exactly mastered yet. Or uh, even remembered all that well in the first place. So I uh, felt pretty swamped dealing with all the different timings and of course the additional tendril attacks. But uh, come on, that's ultimately no big deal. Just a couple of tries and there we go. We're almost through his two massive health bars already. So I'm laying down the law of the land. As long as he doesn't land on top of uh, me. Yeah. Oh, look at him joke! <laughs> look at him suffer! <laughs> Did you see that boy? <laughs> yeah, the fight is already pretty complex and a constant struggle against the decay buildup. Especially because I'm not wearing any meaningful defense parts. But the moment he turns into the puppet starved beast, you would think that his attacks would be similar to the Watchmen, but even the ones that are kind of similar are specifically designed to have slightly different timings just to throw you off. Uh, no sneaky bastards. Oh! Nice. Well, you're basically forced to... Make sure that you parry that correctly. Yeah, finally. <laughs> No! No!
Oh fuck, I just need one more hit. Come on, just... Fuck you. <laughs> wow, that is a rough fight. Yes, that F you throw at the end was personal. But with that nightmare over, the Blood Moon descends or something. Something along those lines at least. And the city of Krat goes full Halloween mode. In fact, even the tutorial boss returns to parade around in his brightest cosplay. And even with an extended moveset, which might allow him to come crawling faster. But despite his name, it didn't take me long to persuade him to obey his master. Now, I do have to say this is actually one of my least favorite boss fights in the game. But not in the sense that I think it's a bad fight by any means. It's just inevitable that something has to end up near the bottom of the list. But of course, what is actually at the bottom of the barrel, and I guess not ironically at the bottom of a cave, is the return of the Bunny Brady Bunch. Whereas the previous encounter was at least tolerable, and as far as a gang fight goes, was at least adequately designed, this is just a fight I truly cannot enjoy by any means. Again, the younger bunnies don't inflict that much damage, and are somewhat passive while one by one they await their turn to be the main enemy. But it's just such an endurance test of absolute boredom. It goes on, and on, and on, and on, and it's just not enjoyable at all. So I guess I have to give the designer props for at least trying to make a fight like this work, but uh, the end result is about as elegant as a beached will. That for some reason looks like a shark, while actually being a submarine. So is this supposed to be a reference to the whale from the actual story? Like, that's what you're going with? Your whale come! <laughs> Son of a bitch. That kind of throws sand in my gears. But actually what really makes them grind even worse is the lengthy session through the castle, where even in my first playthrough I basically just ran past everything. And in this run I ran around running as well. And uh, speaking of the runs, now the time had come to face off against Laxativia, or whatever, the Blade of Manus. And yes, she pretty much uses those exact words. Well, not the laxative reference of course, but the other thing. And although this is arguably one of the best fights in the game, in principle, I would at least currently place it a bit lower on my list, because I think this is the kind of boss fight that I would grow to appreciate more and more, the more I gain an understanding of the fight, because the main issue I currently have during especially the second phase is, uh, well, that I don't exactly comprehend what the hell is even going on at basically any given time. Well, other than knocking back the electricity Ganon style. I mean, that's a pretty cool mechanic. The follow-up desk that appropriately goes at lightning speed, I appreciate perhaps a little bit less, but uh, all in all, during the second phase, I was essentially still just improvising my way through. In fact, even after the fight was done, I still can't say I really learned anything, because, uh, well, you'll see what I mean. It just sucks that I have no clue what she does. So it's everything is a complete guess. Okay. No. No! Oh wait, oh, whoa, whoa, that's right! Oh fuck, delicious! No!
Oh, I got her! What the hell? Whoa, what? I wasn't paying attention to the life bar. What the fuck? It just out of nowhere just got her. What? I wasn't paying attention to a life bar at all. Oh, oh. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't even pay attention to a life bar. I suddenly killed her. Okay. <laughs> that's, uh, that's shocking. No pun, pun intended. Who am I kidding? Of course pun intended. What the hell am I saying? <laughs> Wow, look at my health bar. Look at my fucking health bar. <laughs> Alright, so only the two final bosses remain. First up, Manus, the not necessarily father and arguably not of the Abyss variety. But given that we're nearing the end, I think I should try to draw some conclusions regarding this weapon. And uh, well, first of all, in this particular fight, the baton head certainly is outshined by uh, basically any other option. Especially the acid spear that I used in my first playthrough in this fight. However, the low stamina consumption and the attack speed of the handle works very well in this fight, given that you tend to be constantly low on stamina, because this fight has very little downtime with the constant projectiles and AoEs. But in general, the end conclusion remains the same as the one I started with, because what makes this weapon effective is the handle, not the head. However, despite that, it still functions very well early game, and overall, even though there are better options, it seems to be that basically every weapon in this game is at least viable. It's simply that especially the early game weapons are lower tier, as long as you don't disassemble them. But as far as I can tell at least, truly bad weapons don't seem to exist in this game. So what about equip load? Um, well, <laughs> I actually have a hard time drawing a conclusion about that because I didn't notice any drastic differences. I did tend to have an easier time with stamina management compared to my first playthrough, but that could simply be because it was my first playthrough. And the same goes for how much damage I took since I also got hit more during my first run. So all in all, it is probably the case that you should only go for light equip load if stamina management is something that you're struggling with. And because of the lack of poison in this game, paradoxically, perhaps heavy weapons benefit more from being lighter. Even though I guess it shouldn't be that way. But in the end, whatever you do, it's mainly whether or not you as a player has the ability to endure. That is the one thing that you can definitely bet on. Please hit him! Yes! Ah. Wow! This is such a lengthy fight with constant fucking AoEs. Wow! Yeah, for this, uh, uh, other than the stamina use, uh, this weapon is not good for this uh, fight. Absolutely not. I believe. Then I'll have to retrieve it myself. My well, there we have a true marionette. Oh, this has got to be weird, because then, uh, during the second phase, you basically cut the top of his head off with a blunt object. <laughs> so that, uh... That's interesting. No! Fuck! Such a fucking waste.
Yeah, I staggered him. Nice. It's not wasted. Whoa! Of course. Oh, what? I don't know what he does. Oh, that? <laughs> Fuck! Hit him! Hit him! Yes! Yeah, I got him! I got him! Got him! Got him! Got him! Got him! Ah! Oh, Aaron Vice with double uh, donation. Gates of Politar, and we have Pontiff Sullivan at home. Actually, I think he is uh, more comparable to Maria. Ah, uh -huh. Okay. Thank you so much for the donations. And in the end. Chapado just couldn't let Har Carlos' heart be destroyed. Well, he wanted to put it in the nameless puppet and it was a mischievous boy after all. And now I smash his, his P organ. <laughs> My P organ is the best P organ. Nice delicious.